the world famous controversial television host, not to mention former Cincinnati mayor, Jerry Springer has passed away at the age of 79 years old. Originally born Gerald Norman Springer on February 13, 1944, Jerry came into this world in a London subway station that was being used by his parents as a shelter during World War II bombing raids. The son of a bank clerk and a shoe shop owner, his two Jewish parents had fled Germany for England years earlier. Both of his grandmothers lost their lives in Nazi concentration camps. A few years after the war ended in January of 1949, Jerry and his family emigrated to the United States, settling in Kew Gardens, Queens, New York, where Jerry and his sister Evelyn grew up in a small apartment. Eventually, Jerry would go on to earn a bachelor's in political science from Tulane University in 1965 while becoming a full-fledged member of the civil rights and anti-war generation. In other words, he was 100% liberal and once explained to Cincinnati's WVXU radio station, if you are a child of Holocaust survivors, it's hard not to be a liberal. 27 members of my family were wiped out. You learn that you never judge people on what they are, but what they do. Springer would start his political career by becoming a campaign advisor to Robert F. Kennedy. But after Robert's assassination, he joined the Cincinnati law firm known as Frost and Jacobs. While there, Springer spearheaded the effort to lower the voting age in Ohio, testifying before the Senate Judiciary Committee in support of the ratification and impressing local Democrats enough to earn their support when he ran for Congress in 1970 at the age of just 25. Springer was elected to the Cincinnati City Council in 1971, but resigned three years later in disgrace after admitting during a press conference that he had hired the services of a prostitute. Four years later, Springer won back his seat. Then in 1977, when he ran again, he received so many votes that he was elected mayor. During this period of time, Jerry initiated changes in his local jails, and by 1982, he was setting his sights on the Democratic nomination for governor of Ohio. Unfortunately, he finished a distant third in that race. Throughout this entire period of time, Jerry was also developing his media credentials. He began his career in broadcasting while student at Tulane on the school's radio station. Then, while he was mayor of Cincinnati, he often offered commentaries on a local rock radio station under the banner of the Springer Memorandum. These radio appearances proved popular enough to lead a full-time gig in broadcasting when Jerry was hired as a political reporter and commentator on a local NBC radio station. At the time, it was the station with the lowest rated news show in the market, but Jerry would change all of that. Before long, he had become the state's number one news anchor, as well as the station's managing editor. That's when he first introduced his infamous catchphrase, take care of yourself and each other. For the next five years, Jerry was the most popular anchor in the city, earning 10 local Emmy Awards. Springer would remain a commentator on the channel until January of 1993, roughly 16 months after the debut of the series that would turn him into a global icon, The Jerry Springer Show. Most people might not remember this, but when The Jerry Springer Show started in 1991, it mostly focused on political issues. Of course, it eventually became the exact opposite of that, which is why it also became so incredibly popular. Jerry approached this job as the next logical step in his journalism career, a series that would take a look at a variety of important issues, but the pressure to succeed in the ratings would change all of that. Starting in 1994, Springer and his producers would make significant alterations in the format of the show to appeal to the lowest common denominator. But in a sense, by placing these seldom seen subcultures on screen and exposing them to his large TV audience, Jerry contributed towards the normalization of people who otherwise might never have been perceived as such. Of course, Springer himself was most interested in sex, and the more bizarre, the better. In fact, the series' most controversial episode once involved a man who was married to a horse. Yeah, I look at the next name on the list, and it says Pixel. Well, let's bring out Pixel. <laughs> and out comes this horse. We also can't begin to discuss the series without mentioning the fights that constantly erupted between its guests. I mean, isn't this what it's most famous for? Audiences always debated whether these fist cuffs were staged or genuine, but we've never found out for sure. Either way, the personal drama this series generated turned it into a runaway smash hit. By 1998, at the height of
of its popularity, the Jerry Springer Show was even beating the Oprah Winfrey Show in the ratings by drawing in 12 million viewers an episode. But Jerry always wanted more. The money and fame from hosting this series just didn't satisfy him. So in 2000 and 2004, he toyed around with the idea of running for the US Senate before ultimately deciding against it, realizing that the negative publicity from his series would make victory practically impossible. Instead, he branched out into different mediums, appearing as a version of himself in the 1998 film Ringmaster, as well as hosting NBC's America's Got Talent for two seasons and the game show network series Baggage from 2010 to 2013. He also appeared on Broadway twice, once as the narrator in the Rocky Horror Picture Show in 2001, as well as Billy Flynn in Chicago for about two weeks in 2009. Following more than 4,000 episodes, The Jerry Springer Show finally went off the air in 2018. But Jerry wasn't ready to give up on his career in TV quite yet. After seeing his long running series come to an end, Jerry Springer made one last run at TV with his courtroom show, Judge Jerry, a series that ran for three seasons. It never caught on like his previous creation, but it did provide Jerry a platform to stay relevant during his final years. Last season, he even popped up on The Masked Singer where he was revealed to be the Beatle, singing a Frank Sinatra classic. We didn't know it then, but that would be the last time Jerry Springer ever graced our TV screens with his presence. In April of 2023, a family spokesperson, Jean Galvin, would release a statement that Jerry had died after battling a brief illness, writing, Jerry's ability to connect with people was at the heart of his success in everything. He tried, whether that was politics, broadcasting, or just joking with people on the street who wanted a photo or word. He's irreplaceable and his loss hurts immensely, but memories of his intellect, heart, and humor will live on. While Jerry's illness wasn't elaborated upon, TMZ's sources told them he was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer a few months ago, and this past week he took a turn for the worse. He then died peacefully at his home in Chicago Thursday morning. Funeral services and memorials are currently being developed, but the family asks that in lieu of flowers, Jerry's fans consider following his spirit by donating to a worthy advocacy group. Jerry is survived by his daughter, Katie Springer, and his older sister, Evelyn. We here at Before They Were Famous want to send our condolences to Jerry's family while also saying rest in peace. And really, what is there left to say but the exact thing Jerry would want me to tell all of you? So take care of yourself and each other. Thanks for watching today's episode and please take a moment to leave some of your favorite memories involving Jerry Springer in the comments below. My name's Kara and I'll see you all again in another video.